the English word adiabatic is a funny one. It comes to us almost directly from the Greek, from a uh, meaning not, and dia meaning through, and batos meaning passable. So it's about not being able to get through something. So something adiabatic means something's not getting through. And in physics, we say that an adiabatic thermal process in w is one in which no heat can flow into my system. So I'll put, uh, <clears throat> ooh, how could this be possible? I mean, it doesn't really matter to me whether I've got constant pressure or constant volume, or, or maybe I can't have constant pressure and I can't have constant volume, but what I need is for no heat to flow. And the idea is that I've got this piston and the piston can slide up and down. It's a movable piston. And the interesting thing about it is I've got this insulation here in my container. And so no heat can get in and no heat can get out. Insulated. Insulated, no heat flow. Q equals zero. So either we do stuff to this gas, we could put a mass on it, etc., very similar to as we've had before, um, and we could do stuff to it, but the key is the system is as the system is, and we're not going to have any heat going in, and we're not gonna have any heat coming out, and that's what adiabatic means, insulated from its surroundings. Practically speaking, though, we don't even have to insulate it. What if we do it really, 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 really fast? And this is a bit of a contradiction with our reversible claim that things had to be done so slowly that they can be done backwards each step and get back to where you were. But practically speaking, we can have fast, um, fast things happen. Like, uh, I mean, I'll give you an example of this. There's a, um, <clears throat> there's a tube that we've got in the back and I've never actually seen it work. But the idea is, well, there's this piston and it's big and it just about fills the tube, and you could put a scrap of paper in here. And if you slam your fist down, boom, right on the top of that tube, this direction, then the gas compresses so much, and there's no chance for the heat to leave the gas, because it's a really fast thing, that the paper will light on fire. So let me put some fire on here for you. Good, wow, awesome. So paper lights on fire just from the compression of the gas because it's adiabatic heating and that's awesome. So let's, uh, we're not gonna go crazy into adiabatic right now, but I wanna at least ask you a challenging question. Here's a graph of pressure versus volume and I'm saying what if we start at this point here? This is what I'm gonna call point A. If we start at point A, um, there's an isotherm. There's an isotherm that's nice and symmetric and looks like that. So this, well, let me just label it as an isotherm. And we kind of get the feeling that since isothermic processes and adiabatic processes are not the same thing, the adiabatic line is not going to be the same as the isotherm line. Um, is it then, do you think that if we continue this would keep the same temperature. What if I decrease the volume without allowing heat to flow in or out? So would it be like that or would it be like that? Which one of these would it be, let's see, option one or option two? Which is an adiabat? And I'll leave that as a question for you to ponder while I make a cute little summary of this whole thing. Uh, here is, ready? Here is my summary. And my summary says, well, it's gonna be of like all the thermodynamic processes we've discussed so far. So, constant pressure. I'm gonna first talk to you about constant pressure and the, um, the work done by gas 
the work by the gas is what I'm going to discuss. And I'm also going to discuss, well, um, I mean, I guess, let's just put it like this. Let's see. Constant pressure first has work done, which is P times delta V. And you know it's truly the integral of pressure over volume, but we can be um, discrete right here if you want. And Q, the heat, then is the change in energy plus P delta V. That's just a conservation of energy equation. It says, this actually says that um, delta U is Q minus P delta V. So the change in energy of the system is the heat that entered the system minus the work that the system has done. So that makes sense, I hope. And then we'll talk about constant volume, which is super boring. Constant volume has these characteristics where it can't do anything, and if you want to change the energy of the system, then you have to put heat into it. Great, constant volume, thank you. And isothermal, that was constant temperature. In constant temperature situations, we've got that, well, the work that the gas does has to be the heat that goes into the gas. Ooh, interesting. Because the gas is never changing energy. Because you remember, well, the energy of the gas is, well, I guess it's P times V, but it's also equal to N times R times T. And if the temperature is not changing, the amount of gas is not changing, then we can't have the energy change. So the only way the gas is going to be able to do some work is if you add heat to it. All right, fair enough. And then we have just finished discussing the idea of adiabatic. And that is characterized by no heat flow. And adiabatic, ooh, in adiabatic, if there's work done, it's actually changing the state of the gas. Oh, because we know that Q is zero. No energy is entering the gas. No energy is leaving the gas. The only way that the state of the gas can change is if the gas is actually doing work. So, can we enter back to this discussion? As I lower the volume, oh, as I lower the volume of a gas, if I keep the temperature the same, then, oh, if I keep the temperature the same, then it will follow this curve right here. So do I expect if I'm not keeping the temperature the same, certainly these are not keeping the temperature the same, path one and path two are not. Path one is raising the temperature as I'm lowering the volume adiabatically, and path two is lowering the temperature as I'm lowering the volume adiabatically. So really the question is, as I compress a gas, in order to keep it the same temperature, am I allowing it to lose heat or am I allowing it to gain heat? And I'll just pose that as the way to solve this problem. As an isotherm compresses, is Q greater than zero? or Q less than zero. So I guess what I'd like to say, um, let me see if I can get this all nice and fancy, if the heat goes into an isotherm as it compresses, then I'm not allowing any heat to go into it, and then it would be this path right here, it would be the cooler path. Path two is cooler for the adiabat. But if heat is leaving an isotherm as it is compressing, then it would be this steeper path. This would be the path for an adiabat. So think about that. Maybe put your answer in the um, comments, and uh, that's it.